Good morning, good morning, everyone. I got my coffee, no wait, my tea today. That's how you know it's gonna be a good day. <clears throat> All right, guys, good morning. Welcome to the live stream where we first review the watch list and then we trade the market open every day. Hope everyone had a, a hopefully uh, risk managed and maybe even profitable yesterday. It was a bit of a slow day. Large caps were trading a little bit more. Small caps were very choppy. Um, so hopefully we're gonna get a little bit uh, nicer action today. Today is Wednesday the 13th of May and it's 9.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got another 15 minutes till the market opens at 9.30. We wrap up trading and the stream around 10.45 a.m. <clears throat> Check out the video description below for some FAQs. Let's dive into it. Good morning, everyone. Good to see everyone here. New and old faces. Michael, I see you're doing the $25, $2,500 challenge. That's nice. You got to start somewhere. The less money you start with, the less money you can lose. And if you're just starting out, it's very common to make um, you know silly mistakes. Even I make silly mistakes all the time. Um, I think last week I entered on, ex on accident uh, when I placed the wrong limit order. It was ridiculous. Look at Terry. You guys heard the man. Drop the likes. <laughs> All right, guys, let's let's dive into it. So CYCE having the first um, bigger pullback, retesting VWAP for the first time. And it's really sold off ever since then quite aggressively. So I don't know if CYCC is going to be um, even something I want to be trading. Uh, to begin with, CYCC uh, was not the biggest gap, it was only 32% and it's pulled back quite a bit, um, over half of that. Um, that's a quite a big um, percentage to pull back. It's also had a lot of these failed spikes to the upside, so I want to be a little bit careful with that. Um, recent reverse split, <sighs> let's kind of go here and go through some of the news on it very quickly. Um, 30, 30, I mean, 3 million shares outstanding, that's quite nice. Gapping up 32%, like I said, um, it looks like the only catalyst is that its losses are less. I'm not sure if that's the best catalyst, but um, it's not, it's not, I don't know, it's probably not the worst catalyst. Why is my pen not working? Sometimes I like to write a few of these things down so I have them um, just right in front of me in case I'm trading and I'm not, you know, I don't have time to look up the news. But basically, Q1. Um, less losses, I'll put. That's kind of funny. But what I do like about CYCC is obviously the float. Uh, everything about that is really, really nice. CYCC. Oops. Their ticker kind of makes me, it like is a typo in my brain. It just doesn't let me say it properly. 2.62 million float. That's really nice. Market cap 11 million. It's a US biotech as well. Let's go ahead, kind of check out the list, go through it. Um, and then I'll go back to AP, uh, AR, or no, CYCC. Sorry guys, I'm all over the place. Um, if it looks interesting. Here we go. ARPO. This is, this is kind of nice. Um, this one is just over a dollar. Um, so kind of on the lower end of the price range I'm looking for, but we are making a move back above VWAP. This looks like some momentum kind of came back in this one. Uh, does not look too shabby at all. Gapping up pre-market 110%. So quite a big move here. 41 million float uh, shares outstanding, I meant to say, actually. ARPO. -A Let's see what the float is. 30 million according to Finviz. U.S. biotech again, 25 million market cap. <laughs> they are announcing a license deal for inflammatory bowel disease, IBD. It's a good catalyst. Apparently enough to drive it up 110%. License deal, D-E-A-L. I just wrote bed <laughs> instead of deal. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good or bad sign um, for IBD. Not too shabby. Um, I like the window above it. We have a bit of a gap down area right here, ending about $1.5, $2, and then right around 
um, an interesting area too. So I think that if we maintain this high here and we break above 1.2, this thing could really, really rip today. So I wanna keep a close eye on ARPO. Uh, <clears throat> You know, price range, it's okay, but that float is really, really nice. So I'm definitely going to keep an eye on for that. CRDF, let's see what this one's doing. Just kind of popped up here, gapping up 45%. 12 million shares outstanding. Looks like it's the fourth trading day on CRDF today. So this is going to be kind of interesting. Let's see if we break. Um, so with $2 or 190 would be the area to break. Twenty cent percent pullback. Fourth trading day. Funding. They just got funding. Interesting. Keep an eye on for this one. Would like a break back above VWAP. I'll keep an eye on for that. Could be a nice bounce trade as well. Anything in the one point four area, I think, could be seeing some big, big time support. So I'll actually go ahead and put a alert here as well if we break underneath. Uh, TOS might not give those alerts out uh, quick enough, but uh, I'll still kind of keep an eye out for those. CETX from Peter just popped. I'll keep an eye on that. Yeah, I'm on it right now, actually. I just realized. Yeah, no joke here. 915, this thing ran up really strong. 60% CETX. Remember, these late bloomers are really nice because they are not overly traded pre-market. This thing could give us um, really nice follow through here. We have some, you could see the daily 180 day average is at 1.3, the moving average. So we want to watch out for that um, big time support and resistance in this area. Having a bit of a pullback now, this could be quite a good entry. Um, let's kind of watch it here. This looks kind of good. If we break above the 1.3, this could absolutely rip. 1.75, some big resistance there as well. We traded this not too long ago for a little bit of win, 10 cents a share win. Not too shabby, keep an eye on for this one. Could be a nice little bounce trade right here. Really quickly, I wanna talk about SIF. This is another lead gapper I'm looking at. 97% um, pre-market, holding its highs pretty well, but it is stuck in um, between the four and no wait actually three and four dollar range about 310 um, 180 day moving average right around three dollars could be kind of an interesting spot 2q earnings so we got we got a few plays here this is going to be kind of interesting i want to keep an eye on sif see if we start pulling higher here i really think this could be um, quite a good little run. Might have a right to green move or it could start pulling higher. But right now, it's not really too thickly traded. I'm not seeing too much volume in. So uh, I want to see some volume come in on this one. Let's go back to CTX. Let's see if it's curling here. So they came out with news. Could be a little pop back to the upside. Got to break the 1.1. Here we go. This could be it. Virtual reality application order. It's got to be a giant order. CETX, let's go here. Got another six minutes to the market open, so no rush. CETX. It's a U.S. conglomerate, six million market cap, seven million float. Two million dollar order. I mean, that's like 33% of their market cap. That's a big order. So yeah, this is clearly making the stock move. This is probably going to keep ripping here, especially with such a small float. SLGG popped up and ISR as well. It is 
in this big resistance zone though so it's got to break above this resistance area but so far really really nice move here 55 percent quite impressive we got slgg popping up as well this one i think just hit 20 percent big time resistance at about six dollars pulled back already yeah this was on our scanner actually earlier today ISR, bit of a pullback here, ran up to 127, very shaky, not the nicest pre-market chart. Going back to CETX, I do like how this one's moving. I wouldn't be surprised if it had a secondary. Let's see what. It, let's see how this thing opens up. This should be quite interesting. I don't really like the price range on it. I don't like that. Um, I don't like the decimal places. Obviously, the four extended decimal places on TD Ameritrade. I, I also don't like that it's generally, uh, you know, at a dollar. Heiko says the old me. I gotta say, it's quite tempting to want to buy this one right now on this first pullback here. And I, I think there's actually decent risk reward, especially because it pulled up so aggressively and now it's pulling back um, 18%. I mean, there's definitely um, bounce potential on this one. Just big, big, big resistance here. That's good. That's good. Heiko's getting his rules together, guys. That's what it's all about. Understanding, you know, your personality a little bit more and start tailoring your trading strategy to your personality. We're all different. So um, don't just blindly copy anyone. Um, try to learn from as many people as possible, but understand you gotta, you know, trade yourself. Out of the gates, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bit weird of a morning, I gotta say. Um, I'm not, you know, super stoked about any, anything suspicious, uh, oh, I can't even speak, uh, specifically. But um, I'm going to keep my eyes out. I got another screen with another chart open. I hope it doesn't mess up the stream too much. So I will close it <clears throat> if we have some issues here. Um, I'll be trading on this screen so you guys see all my trades. But I'll be keeping an eye on um, some other lead gappers. So I'm going to put SIF up and CETX for now. Actually, A R P O. Keep an eye on this one as well. We got another minute till the market opens here. In case you guys are wondering what my other screen looks like, it's basically two charts uh, or two stock charts, um, two different tickers, and I got the one minute, the five minute, and the daily. So very similar to what I'm looking at, just the charts. Real did that. Real, you know what? That's like almost the exact same for me. I had seven green days in a row, and then I had three red days. Uh, so let's see, let's see what we can get. CETX still looks quite interesting here. Got a close eye on SIF as well. Could be interesting in round three. ARPO, we'll keep an eye on for that. Close the former gappers for now. Good luck, everyone. Three seconds. No orders ready to go. Usually I would. This could be an interesting move. CETX at about, a, I'd be looking for about a thousand shares at a dollar if I wanted to buy this potential break past 1.1. SIF making some big moves.
Look at that. Big, big, big move out of the gates with it. Let's see if we can get an entry here. This could be halting any moment now. 19%. I'm actually surprised it hasn't halted yet. Putting a conservative limit order here in case there's a flash pullback. Otherwise, I'm going to be waiting for a five minute setup. ARPO as well, similar situation. SLGG halted out of the gates. Colton, good call on that. SIF, $4, big support here coming in. Big volume though, out of the gates. Very, very aggressive mover here. Position size for the first trade. Let's see what we get here. See if it pulls back a little bit more. Big resistance in this area, guys. You got to remember. ARPO pulling back as well. Could be a good buy around 0.9. SIF. Consolidating. This could be a really, really good five minute breakout, one minute pullback. I probably won't be risking it. Markets are a little bit uh, red, but that's fine with the small caps. Actually, I found that small caps tend to do better sometimes even on a red market. So not really too much of a concern for me. SIF could be a really nice entry there at four. Now it's breaking here, 475. That was it. That was a really, really solid move. Hopefully somebody got in on that one. Choppy breakout though, but looking pretty good. Woo -hoo -hoo! This one's got some power behind it. Two, six million shares outstanding. That's what happens sometimes with these low floats. That's what we like to see. Two. Second quarter earnings look like, looking like they're very powerful. Five to 550, some major resistance in this area. I'm just kind of watching it here. No need to get aggressive. Well, it actually would have been good to get aggressive, but I missed that first entry. So it's fine. Just kind of watching this one here. Let's see how, let's see how it runs. So this is a really, really nice pullback here in this area. I really like that fact that it held its highs. Honestly, when this candle did not pull much further back than this, this would have been a good time to get aggressive. Let's see, this move so far, 29%. How is this not getting halted? That's my question. Look at that. 5.5 is some huge, huge multi-week, multi-month resistance zone. $4 is a bit more support. This is definitely the lead gap around the day, SIF. CYCC is back here as well. Biggest dollar volume. Percentage-wise, it's not moving that much though. So maybe on any sort of dips with CYCC. Otherwise, I'm not really sure here. This has been quite a wicked run. Looking for a potential entry.
CYCC had a, just a super aggressive pullback. Tried to open up higher, but it did not work. This is when the chat room gets very quiet and the market open. I usually don't have time to check it for like 15 minutes after the market opens, but since I'm not in any trade, uh, it's a little bit more calm on my end. SIF, I'm just kind of watching this one. Let's see what we get here. Three, six minutes now into the market open. Want to be careful. Don't want to, you know, get stuck in this thing on the way down. Uh, big support here at four. I think there's going to be a retest at one point. This could just be the second pullback though. Maybe it's going to be a longer ABC setup. Giant, giant spread on SIF. SLGG, ooh, that's a heavy drop. This could be the second pullback getting ready to rip here. I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. I would really like an entry on SIF, so I'm, I'm waiting for a potential setup here. This could be a nice ABC pattern forming in the making right now. Super League Gaming, SLGG, interesting setup there. <laughs> Technical issues on Heiko's front. SIF, definitely the lead gapper on the day. So much momentum on this one. I gotta say, I'm a little bit surprised. We've had kind of two, three slower, slower days out of the gates, but I like to see this momentum back. It's really, really nice. Not as much volume as you might expect. CTX above VWAP. Yeah, CETX, I've been having really bad lucks on these um, VWAP breakouts. Although this one is a bit more of a red to green move, could be a first pullback getting set up right now on CETX. Ooh, look at SIF. Choppy, choppy move. Bit of a fake out there. Nine minutes into the market open. CETX, having a continuation. I gotta say CETX looks pretty good. I wanna keep watching SIF. Nike's living the life right now. A R 
PO, we are talking about a potential reversal here um, in the mid low 9.9s and really nice little bounce on that one. Check out CETX, had a bit of a fake out there. That's why I was so nervous with CETX, having this VWAP breakout, but technically this is a first pullback. A lot of sellers here though, making me a little bit nervous, but this looks like it could be a really, really good setup. I'm gonna keep a close eye on it. SIF back at five point, might break five here. Yep, CETX pulls back. See, I was so worried about that. These moves on SIF are just absolutely wild. I mean, this, this candle alone, 8%. SIF looking like it had a failed break to the downside. This could this could keep running here. I would not be surprised. I kind of hope it doesn't because I really want this one to have a little bit better of a setup. Terry says, I have good patience, but I'm feeling some FOMO right now. <laughs> but I'll take it. ARPO getting close to a dollar again. No trades yet for me this morning. 12 minutes now into the market open. SIF looking like it could break past the 5.2. I gotta say, it's really building up some momentum here. 5.2, there it was. 5.22, 5.25, phew. Yup, yup, yup. I would be probably closing out my position because I would be so sketched out with this multi-month resistance right above us. I've been wanting to see this one kind of set up a better pattern here. And well, here we go, actually. Now it's finally pulling back a bit more. Yeah, SLGG, man. I feel you on that. That's been kind of halting and going down. Here we go, SIF. Whew, big, big, big candle here. 12% already. I'm watching the five minute. CTX pulling back as well, SIF. Twelve percent candle on that one. Pulling back again here. CTX also pulling back. Four fifty-five, looking like it's acting as some pretty decent support. Hole in half dollar. SIF has been holding these half dollar zones pretty well, and the full dollar. Uh, so on the on the daily, it's quite noticeable. I think SIF has the potential to curl pretty hard right here.
4.5 definitely has a pit, has been a pivot zone in the past. CTX pulling back really, really aggressively in this area. Markets are red, Bitcoin's green. VIX is up a little bit. SIF is definitely our lead gapper. I like that it's holding this area. This is actually looking pretty good right here. That was a very aggressive pullback. Looks like it's about to break back above the EMA. ARPO guys, this one found support. Fifty seven getting chipped at here, four sixty, four fifty. Boom. Some bigger orders finally coming through here. This is looking pretty good. Still no trades for me. Didn't see something I really liked this morning and I kind of missed the F S I F first pullback. So decided to just kind of give it a little bit longer. It's a good chance we'll see some nicer kind of five minute setups a little bit later here, 9.48. Still trending above below VWAP. Quick study. This is looking good on SIF, I gotta say. Doesn't even look like it's gonna break this area. It just, it hasn't had that much buying volume in here. The, the bounce hasn't been extraordinary. Uh, you guys know how I feel about the bounces. So I'm just kind of giving it a little bit more time here. Three trades today. So let's see if we can, you know, find the best setups. Jay Walker's wondering what time I run my scanners. I actually have my scanners going now all the time, but around 8.30 is when I start checking for the first time. Yeah, CETX keeps pulling back. ARPO is pulling back as well. Actually quite aggressively right now, having a huge dip. It's 
switch my screens up a little bit more here. I almost feel like ARPO had some news come out or something about it. I mean, that was quite a strong um, pullback here. Had a bit of a double top, got rejected. Big support near 0.9. So far has not been able to break, break out of that. SIF at 4.65. SLGG, don't really like touching these that just kind of constantly get halted. And then pulling back, big resistance here at six. Has failed to break higher from that area. CYCC absolutely doing nothing. CETX really, really low on the on the scale in terms of you know where I'm typically looking to to trade um, finding some support here this could keep pulling back I really think SIF is the most interesting stock we got today so I'm gonna keep a close eye on it <laughs> truth thinks he has negative earnings Still looking for a potential buy on SIF. So far it's just kind of consolidating here. I gotta say though, if it pulled back to four, I kind of would have expected it to happen already. That's awesome to hear, Heiko. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, you guys can learn from all my mistakes right away in real time. I think that's definitely quite valuable. Um, when I first started streaming, I didn't really think that it would be, it would get the response it has been getting. So that's pretty cool. I'm happy you guys enjoy it. Jose, nice, nice. Here we go, SIF pulling back higher here. This is looking actually quite good. This is kind of what we've been waiting for. Not a lot of volume though, kind of making me a little bit iffy. I probably would not be buying the breakout on SIF, but I'd be buying a pullback. Here we go, could be seeing a pullback a little bit right now. I was really hoping we would break the 4.5 with maybe not that strong of volume. And then I would buy, hopefully, into the reversal there. That's kind of what my game plan was. 479 breaking out here. Just an absolutely wicked, wicked stock. Super aggressive. Woohoo! Art Studio, that's what I like to hear. And then you could use the simulator right away. 468, 47 getting chipped away. This could be the, the break of 4.5 that I've been waiting for. 4.6, again, big support in this area. There's a lot of buyers here on ARPO, which I don't blame people. This is our lead gap, there's not a lot of other activity going on in the market. So I like what I'm seeing as well. Instantly, instantly this thing comes back. Nine fifty four AM. Interesting time we, we are guiding we're getting here. So we had a little bit of a failed breakout here. Could be another attempt coming up right now at 470. There was a decent amount of buying volume. Man, interesting days we've been having. Very unusual, I feel like. But that's just how it is sometimes. FWP halted.
Here we go. SIF finding, building up a little bit more momentum here. I think there's a really good chance that this might break higher. I probably won't be getting long SIF until we do have a confirmation, uh, but I'm not totally sure yet. It really depends. I do kind of like how we're holding the price here. No need to jump in on it. I see FWP. Looking quite interesting, gotta say. Has a bit of a high at 9.58. High at 11. I think a lot of people are gonna be jumping on this one. This is gonna open up here. Should open up pretty soon actually. Maybe even any moment. I'm gonna go ahead and put alert here, see if it opens up. SIF. 4.7. What a morning, what a morning. No trades for me yet so far. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I'm also a bit confused why it's still halted on FWP. Sometimes the fifth, they're 15 minutes halt. Sometimes there's they're 20 minutes halt, but they're almost always 10 minute halts. Maybe there's a news that came out with it. Sometimes they'll extend it. Remember that halt that was 60 minutes? What was that ticker? That was absolutely just wild. Yeah, short squeeze definitely possible with SIF. Volume really, really faded on SIF. It seems like a lot of people are watching, just sitting and waiting. Um, nobody really wants to get on this thing too early, which I don't blame anyone because right now there is no real specific indicator. There's no you know, clear entry indicator. Here, 480, if this one gets chipped away, this could actually be some good potential here. Did get chipped away, having, a, again, a pullback. Knowing me, I probably would have bought a fake out I'm super confused why CYCC is just absolutely not doing anything. It seems to be just pulling back more and more. It's off my scanner again because it pulled back too far. SIF is just constantly making me want to buy these dips. FWP still halted, CETX kind of still pulling lower here, but kind of in some big support zone. So I wouldn't be surprised if CETX did have at least a little bit of a bounce. Yeah, boy, Claus, I, I feel the same way. Here we go, SIF. But I think it's also a little bit because this is not my bread and butter setup strategy. I'm still getting used to this because I kind of came from a different trading style. So I'm like learning a new strategy. And I think the reason on my breakout trading isn't that great yet is, is because I'm mixing up two strategies a little bit. Like here, I was waiting for a bit more of a pullback when I should have been buying, you know, that five minute breakout, one minute pullback. Um, this was quite nice. 
Uh, so buying this breakout, even here, even at the 443 would have been a good ticket. I mean, that was a really solid setup. BWEN, were we watching that one? Yeah, I'm looking at CETX on my other screen and um, who hold second SIF kind of pulling this might break 4.5 here. The low was about 4.51 or 4.5. It's hard to say. The C CTX definitely has the 50 minute EMA coming in uh, on the five minute chart, looking like some support. Volume's really fading on it though. And Mike, just keep pulling back. I, I don't know. It's hard to say. I'm just happy I did not buy that breakout, VWAP breakout pullback. I did that, I think, three three times in a row or whatnot. Each time it didn't work out, and I was so fed up with it. Because there was a time it worked out really good. Ooh, FWP opening up here. Instantly went to 12.1. Too much to watch right now. SIF finally broke the low. Don't want to take my eyes off of it just yet. If there's not a lot of selling volume here, I would probably get aggressive at one point. Forty-three. Not that much selling volume though. Gotta say, this could bounce right here. Would want to see a bigger pullback first though. Forty-four. A lot of eager beavers dip buying this thing. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. So many dip buyers on that one. FWP got halted again. CETX broke this kind of 94 area that was very important. Just kind of pulling back all day here. You can kind of see it on this chart, just constantly pulling back. On the daily, it does look kind of interesting because this 0.89 areas, um, we had some tops and bodies in this area, open and closed, so it could be a nice little bounce. Um, but you know, a lot of volume just kind of disappearing on this one. Uh, so that's not the, the most exciting thing. I would have liked to maybe trade FWP, but it got halted so fast, so fast. Still no trades for me and it's 10 o'clock, 30 minutes now, 34 minutes into the market open. West Coast Florida Fishing Channel. No worries. Just You just got to stick around long enough and eventually everything will start making sense. I also have a video, an over, overview video called the $25,000 Challenge. Um, I would definitely recommend watching that one first. Otherwise, it definitely, if, you, if you've never traded before, it's, um, it's definitely quite a lot to get into. Heiko's been here about two months now, and he's really getting into the groove. He had some beautiful trades yesterday. One I think was like three hundred or four hundred dollar profit. Really sweet. This is it. S I F. So big support came in here. We were not able to break four point four. Really, we broke it for a second. So many dip buyers on this one. I think people are just looking for something, something with volume, and that's S I F one hundred percent. I'm 
I'm actually going to remove this net here. I don't look at it um, quite often, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove that. The other strategy was always buying near big time support um, or big breakouts pulling back to support, um, typically on the daily chart as well. Um, actually, mainly on the daily chart. It's it's a bit more uh, pause off trading. Primarily my crypto trading strategy that came from stock trading, and it's what I use for my IRA account. And it works very well. It's just very slow. You know, so sometimes I'll go a week without having a trade. It's very simple, just overall support and resistance trading. But yeah, for uh, for streaming or for active morning trading, it's it's not really applicable. Yeah, I think we're gonna get some nice moves here because we, we're seeing a lot of pullbacks, CETX pulling back constantly. We have FWP uh, opening up, but super hard to somehow snag. Big pullback right now on it. It is open. I think it just got halted again. Here it is, FWP. Wouldn't be surprised if we had a big bounce off the $9 area. So I'm gonna be watching that one quite closely. I'm gonna put an alert on SIF, see if we keep pulling back. I don't wanna keep watching it. Although I do like to be kind of focused in on just one, maybe two stocks. So I think S um, FWP might be that other one. It just keeps on getting halted and these are sometimes very tricky to trade. So buying out of the halt would have been quite interesting. It just would have been very difficult to do. SIF back at ARPO. Wow, this is quite unusual. 40 minutes now to the market open and I have yet to do a trade. ARPO. Kind of similar to CETX. Both of them are still pulling back here quite aggressively, I might add. ARPO. 0.89, kind of 0.9 is huge, huge support. And we didn't really break it with that much strength. So this could actually be a really good dip by area for it. As long as it uh, maintains this area. SIF, looking better and better in these areas. Still trending though to the downside. Man, oh man, not really seeing anything. I, I wouldn't be surprised if I just didn't trade today. At least I would end my red streak. <laughs> BTIQ halted recent IPO TEE competitor for Tesla. What's the company called? IPO. Let me check this out on Finviz. IPO. Uh, did I say IPO? VTIQ, I meant. VTIQ. VTIQ. Shell companies, it's a financial. 
Are you sure VIT, VTIQ is a recent IPO? Maybe I just typed in the wrong thing. VTIQ. Looks pretty shady. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Big green days. God, man, we're getting so many halts, huh? Four financial stocks moving. A little over the price range, but it has a decent rate of change. I gotcha. Man, it's just pullback central right now. Another bit of a slow day, getting aggressive with SIF, really aggressive right out of the gates, would have been probably the best trade today. Unfortunately, it was not on my main chart and I was not watching it and I'm not super comfortable with switching charts super fast. So kind of came to the party a little bit late and then I didn't feel comfortable getting super aggressive. So I kind of missed that move, at least at the moment. Ten thirteen, maybe we'll squeeze out one trade. Who knows? We still got maybe another. I'll probably give it another thirty minutes at least, maybe forty five if we see some activity coming back in. It really depends what I'm seeing. Um, I think there's many potential uh, trades in the making right now, even with the pullbacks. FWP opened up again, big volume out of the gates, had a bit of a pullback, ripping up again. This one's just super entertaining to watch. These, these candles on it are ridiculous. And look at that spread on this stock. <laughs> big volume coming in on it though. People like it. Quick pull back there. I think Coronavirus news. A lot came out. Patent hearing. I don't know, maybe they know something I don't. Nice, Heiko, get rid of that. Don't let it become a burden. Nice move. SIF moving again as well. Good call. Good stuff cutting those losses, Heiko. I like what I'm seeing on SIF. We had a five minute breakout pulling back here a little bit. This could be good. A little bit of volume coming back in as well.
This has been such a character of a stock to try to trade. Here we go, big buyers coming in a little bit here. Sixty-three. Might look for a little bit of a smaller position size on this one. We felt the highs pretty okay. Good cut on CTX, Heiko. That thing is just pulling back. Sixty-five. This looks good. Building up momentum here. Seventy. Got to break seventy-five. Back to 71, 72, 74. Could this could be the break right now? Looking for a little bit of an entry here. Small position size. See if we can break above VWAP. Probably just going to give this one one attempt here. Take half position size off the table. Was hoping that would be the break, but it wasn't. Give it one more opportunity here at the 70, 71. There we go. Let's close out this trade. Looks like it might pull back again. I'm out of this one. I gotta say it's looking good though. Don't wanna get kind of skunked out. I'd rather just kind of close this one. I was hoping we would have a big move. I said I was gonna only give it one try. Um, you know, yesterday I closed my position too early, but so that kind of sucked in terms of getting out right before the big move. And I think today I probably did it again. Yeah, oh, I did. Got a little bit too, too, too conservative. Oh well, I think SIF is going to set up some really, really, really nice entries. So I liked seeing. I wanted this to break out, even though I was no longer in it. I've been waiting for this one to kind of come back a little bit here. I just don't like the fact that 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 break didn't have a lot of volume. So let's see what happens on it. I'll probably be re-entering this one quite soon here. FWP had a quite a nice little pullback. This could, could break out again. We got CTX. So good you got out of that trade. Nice. Good thing you, good thing that wasn't your four thousand dollar position size. That was a Good thing you took smaller position size on that. A little bit shakier trade. Here we go, SIF. This could be the break of 4.8. Boom, so it happened. Um, ah, ah, Man, I've been getting just absolutely on the wrong side of so many of these trades. Um, well, not wrong side, but let's just keep it going. No, no reason to be upset. Let's see how this thing goes. SIF, I'm so happy we're seeing some, some momentum coming back here. So, so happy. SIF. I mean, uh, FWP, kind of watching this one out of the corner of my eyes. 
CETX I think is, is more or less um, dead. So I think I'm really gonna be focused on SIF uh, for this kind of second phase of the morning. We got two more trades to make today. So let's see what we get. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a really aggressive pullback on SIF at one, at one point. Look at that selling volume already, just insane. IDG XG, good call out. Whoo, whoo, ah, could have made 30 cents a share on this one, 40 cents a share. That would have been a perfect, perfect setup. Nice 8% roughly. Five nineteen. I just gotta get back into the groove of things after after my little three red days. I think I've been just, I think I'm just shaked out. Pew pew tube. Took a loss today. I'm out, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Don't worry about the losses. As long as they're small, there's no worries. First green trade today, SIF. Same here. Hopefully you had the nicer one. You know, I was quite convicted. Um, I had quite a the amount of good good amount of conviction behind SIF. Um, I, I don't really know. I'm gonna have to think about this one a little bit. I should have held a little bit longer. Um, I think I just have a little bit of red day trauma, and that that's that's actually probably more the reason why I got out of this trade, which is a little bit unfortunate. So let's just keep, kind of keep trading here. Wait for the good setups. I like that the volume's back in play with SIF. We could have a break of 5.5 .5 at one point in a little bit here. So I like what I'm seeing. Dan Aru, yeah, I feel the same way. Definitely feel the same way. Look at that five minute breakout. That is looking really, really sweet. FWP might try to do another crack here to the upside. All right, Corey, nice trading with you, man. At least it was a green day. I feel the same way though. Feel the same exact way. <laughs> That's the only problem with trading two strategies. You're always like torn a little bit. Ten twenty four here. I just realized I still had a limit order out here. I actually totally forgot about that limit order. I was like, why do I have less funds available to trade today? Did I do four trades yesterday? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Watch out with that 2.4 area. This is a VWAP breakout pullback. Really, really don't like these. Although this is a lead gapper first green day, which makes it much, much nicer.
strong pullback to basically where we had our breakout trade entry. I think SIF might start curling it though. I think it's just building up momentum here. It's going to be tough to decide when to go long, but always just kind of looking for those good setups. I wouldn't be surprised if I took two really quick trades on SIF. Getting an entry at 66. Only a partial fill. Move down my limit order here a little bit more. Not sure how much more. A lot of dip buyers on this one. Price held pretty well. I wouldn't mind getting a, I don't mind buying higher. I just want to avoid um, that sell-off pressure. I want to see this thing start trending back up again. I'm going to move my limit order out of the way now. Just kind of waiting for, let's see if we can see um, a little bit better of a setup. 10.29, these are times I typically like wrapping up trading, so I'm just going to give it a little bit longer here. I still like what I'm seeing with SIF. Pulling back again here. Selling volume fading though. I'm waiting for this one to kind of give up some of the selling pressure. This could be a higher low. That's kind of what I'm looking for. This is definitely the lead gapper on the day. So a lot of people are looking at this one. I think a lot of people are waiting for this one to finally make some moves higher. Kind of reminds me a little bit of CBAY yesterday where near the end of the day, then it started kind of um, making some moves in the right direction again. FWP pulling back here, BWEN pulled back as well. ARPO at 8.44, that's quite a big dip on that one. SIF still trying to pull back. Selling volume really, really fading though. I have a very small partial entry on it. 
I'd rather buy above 4.7 as momentum comes back into this one. I gotta say, FWP has some really nice uh, movement overall. Here we go, this is what I was waiting for, 76, look at this thing. Finally getting some activity back in here. <laughs> That's a good question, AB. Quick pull back there to 66 again. Definitely a bit of a buyer's zone. A lot, a lot of dip buyers there at 65. SIF, it's shaky, it's shaky. I don't really see a reason why I'd wanna actually build my second position just yet. Um, I do like the fact that it just can't break 4.66 too well. It gives me a little bit of confidence there, but at the same time, I mean, it's holding this area quite nicely. I'm not convinced though. Slow trading day, very, very slow trading day. West Coast Florida is asking if we do option trades. I don't know, some people here might, I don't. WFP still pulling back. BWEN looks kind of interesting. 66 getting chipped away here. I don't know how I feel about this trade. It's kind of just doing nothing exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and close this one out. <clears throat> I had um, a small 50 partial entry. I'm just gonna close it out. Don't wanna really think about it. Um, don't want that affecting me in any sort of way. Um, it was just basically a scratch on that one.
I'm gonna close it out for now. I don't know what's gonna happen with SIF. We're past 10:30. Um, it could have some, you know, direct public offering coming out about it. I don't want to like just be blindly holding something. Um, I want to see this thing, you know, make higher highs, um, five minute breakout, one minute pullback, some nice stuff. And I just, I'm not seeing it right now. It could happen. I'm not saying it's going down. I'm just, um, not really that interesting for me right now. Uh, I think with trading uh, West Coast Florida fishing, <clears throat> it's really easy to get in a mindset that the grass is always greener on the other side. And then, you know, you spend a year trying a bunch of different stuff, which might not be the worst thing um, if you're just starting out and you want to, you know, see what everything's about. But at one point, I think you got to kind of pick something. And for me, spot trading, which is just, you know, buying and selling or shorting and uh, covering um, has been very good over the years. Um, right now I'm picking up one new strategy and that's the morning momentum gap and go. Um, so that's like the second thing I'm doing now with trading after many years. Um, and I think if I just threw an options trading, it would be, you know, a little bit overwhelming. I think I probably will dabble with options at one point, but I don't see why I would at the moment. I don't think it works on Weeble, <clears throat> one AP Pro, but I would I would probably ask them. I've tried to do the same thing on Weeble because it freaks me out that I can't do that. Or, yeah, it freaked me out that I couldn't see my trades on the, on their chart. I gotta say, SIF, it's holding, it's holding it pretty well. Like it doesn't have obnoxious selling pressure, and then it constantly makes new lows. So I think SIF could be breaking out pretty soon here. I'm not long SIF. I took one trade on it and then a partial trade, which was more of a scratch. I don't even really want to know if I want to call that a trade. But I won't be trading it until I see a very clear setup of some sort. Nice, really nice. I think I have nothing against options trading, you know? I think it could be really, really good. Um, I, have a, I have a really good friend who's crazy about options. I just don't wanna like be focused on too many things and then mix up trading strategies, I guess you can say. Looks like we both got a partial fill on it, huh? Let's see what it does. Man, today has been an absolutely slow second half of the morning. I, this was really, SIF was everything. The first like 10 minutes, like not even the first seven minutes and then it was over. I like having this second screen. I'm not gonna lie, it makes me very excited. Style study. Ooh, SIF. This is this could be what we've been waiting for. We have the first green candle to make a new high. Quite nice. Quite, quite, quite good. Did anyone buy that FWP pullback to 959? That almost looks perfect. I stole your shares. Somebody stole my shares. This thing was so lightly traded. I only got 50 shares. What, what is going on? I still, I still genuinely like SIF. I do. And I think there's potential here.
We didn't really talk about how it maintained some of the other spikes. Didn't really have too many spikes, to be honest. This thing's been more of a consistent grower or a consistent shrinker. So this today was really one of the first gap up days. We had a bit of a gap up day here. Actually gave back a lot of its highs. Um, but it, it still maintained some decent growth. It's quite good. Wait till you get four screens. <laughs> Actually, I only have two screens. I just I just plop this one right next to the YouTube chat so I can see it. I still only have two screens. I would like three. I don't know if I need four, but three would be three would be ideal. I think four would probably be good. Yeah, Grupo. Uh, Grupo. I I think um, it's not the worst idea. Good to hear from you, Satoshi, though. I feel like you were a bit quiet today. Were, were you just offline a little bit in the beginning? Maybe I missed a few messages or something. Look at this slow and steady volume coming back with SIF, guys. This is beauty. This is looking really good. Maybe we could even see another breakout here. <clears throat> ah, oh, I feel you, Heiko. A bit of volume coming back there. This really, really reminds me of CBAY from yesterday. Looking to buy this pullback here. Remove my limit order. Looking to go to long at 74. Sixty-eight holding again. Close the position, another red day. You gotta be kidding me, $10 red day. I was like, if this has one more pullback, I am so, I am so out of here. It's just, I don't like these slow movers, these fast flash crashes, these fake outs. I was actually just about to say, you know what? I'm out of here, I'm just gonna take my $7 today. I don't really regret the exit at all. I technically have one more trade to make today because this, the second trade on the day was a, a, was a fake. So what I'm actually on SIF, and this is actually why I'm thinking about not trading it anymore, is if you guys remember with um, CBAY, 
we actually had a nice afternoon rally and then at one point it totally got slammed so let me quickly show you guys and this is why i keep saying it looks like cpay you guys can kind of see this this was cpay um, from the day before i'm not sure why my trades aren't showing up here one second show trades anyway we bought this breakout and then it had a nice little six percent run i sold too early on this one uh, but then it you know it just got slammed the rest of the day and i'm really worried to get stuck in one of these pullbacks or something like that we just haven't seen good follow through lately i'll take a red day any day as long as it's not a big red day so i don't, I don't really mind that um, i'm just trying to avoid these big losses and i don't like that sif is just geeking me out every five seconds it's freaking me out a little bit so a little bit of shaky shaky trading on my end but what do they say either a breakout or bailout and this one i was looking for the dip got the dip it was just too weak here we go this could be the next run Talk about FOMO Central I'm having over here. Heiko, I totally agree with you. I could see this thing just whack being down 10%, you know? I also feel like this thing could just come out with a direct public offering any second as well. So one red trade, one green trade, one scratch that I might just I guess I have to count it right that's what I do I don't know do I have to count partial fills I'll probably count it slow slow day I can't wait for a big day I honestly thought when SIF this morning was taking off like a rocket I was like yes I didn't get it but this is good sign. This is a good energy. I like seeing this. I hope this continues all day or all morning, but then it didn't, so. No days off says, I think I just need to shake off the cobwebs and yeah, I probably do a little bit. Although I don't know where they came from. <laughs> Red street cobwebs, I guess. I have been trading a little bit too, like like a chicken that just got its head cut off or something. That sounds way too vulgar. I don't know what that looks like, but or what that would trade like. But yeah, I mean, this SIF right here, this was a pretty good setup. I should have held this one a little bit longer. This, I don't know. I, I honestly want to be done with trading by 1030. I don't really even like being around anymore at this time. So that's a bit of a red flag. Here we go. This pullback buy was actually a good buy if I held it. 5% already. I'd be walking away like a happy little kid. I probably would have closed my position already. Satoshi says I should trade with one share. It's probably not the worst idea. Hey, we had like the same entry. Nice getting out on the green on that spike. That was pretty nice. Heal thyself says he got in at 458 SIF. I don't know, man. That's totally up to you based on your trading strategy. Oh, whew. I just got like cross-eyed. Everything just went blurry. Um, 
It's so hard to say, man. I could see this going both ways. I've been kind of feeling like there's going to be a big drop coming, so I probably would have taken profits on any of the little spikes to the upside. I don't like the fact that we have fading volume. This could keep running up. This could break past 5, break past 5.2, have a healthy little you know, pullback back to 5, <clears throat> and then just really have a solid... Um, maybe one or two hour run from there. Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I would, I'm a little bit, I would be nervous with M-A-R-K. It's on what, it's like fifth big green day? Oh yeah, so today's, I would, if I was looking at Mark, I would actually probably be considering shorting it I think this thing hit a high of 2.5. It went up 10 times from about 25 cents in the last few trading days or trading weeks. I, th I see more downside risk. I would probably look to buy this on like a $1 bounce or like a 70 cent bounce as like a long-term support uh, kind of trade, swing trade. But uh, this thing, this thing looks like it's on its way down at the moment. FWP had not too shabby a bounce here, eight percent bounce. I kind of want to be like trading anything besides SIF for some reason. It's ten fifty three. What is going on here? Any plans on making a Q and A video anytime soon from Jeffrey? Um, I've actually have not thought about it. But that's not a bad idea. Maybe like a Saturday or a Sunday, just kind of like throw it up there, join for the Q and A session. It would definitely help me answer some questions in more relaxed environment. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard for me to focus on answering questions when I'm in a trade. One AP Pro has a pretty good answer as well on heal thyself. Um, it's it's called a trailing stop loss, where as the price goes higher, maybe your stop is like five percent down or ten percent down from the price. Um, so as the price goes up, your stop goes up, but as the price goes down, your stop remains fixed. So that way, you can technically maximize profits or maximize the whole move and then you limit your downside. The only problem is, I think that works a lot better with mid and large caps. With small caps, you get, you know, five, 10% flash, and then you have a continuation to the upside. Uh, that's why I don't do it on small caps. But yeah, it's, it's definitely an idea. GNUS still making moves. GNUS got ooh, slaughter central with that DPO, huh? MARK still selling off. Oy, 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 oy. FWP looks like it might retest VWAP. <clears throat> Had a really nice 15 minute EMA breakout, pullback, continuation. The only thing about it is the volume has more or less disappeared from the face of the earth. Man, once SIF, if it breaks this 15 minute EMA, I think it is out of here. But if it doesn't, it could also be out of here to the upside. Also be really careful on buying the pullbacks with SIF. Um, there is a chance that it comes out with news that it's doing a direct public offering or something like that. They typically tend to happen past 1030 or pre-market. Tomorrow I have two cups. Yeah, why am I so tired lately? It's a good point. No days off. I gotta say EFOI, I've been kind of looking at this one out of the corner of my eye the whole entire day. It is sub dollar and I typically don't trade the sub dollars, but I really like how this one's trending to the upside. Um, might break past 0.7.
This could be a really interesting little move here. Up on earnings. Bit of an increase here. Over the 180 day moving average, this thing could probably see 0.8 from here. Some more resistance at 0.6, but I would probably call it more support right now. It's definitely a bit of a resistance zone where it is right now. One, two, three, four, five green candles in a row. Rate of change. 20%, not too bad. See some volume kind of coming in this one a little bit as well. If we wanted to trade this one, we'd probably be looking for about 14, 1600 shares, 1500 shares, somewhere in this area. <clears throat> Don't know if we're gonna trade it, but just, you know, theoretical stuff, SIF back at degree move really don't like that big resistance though above it that's some heavy stuff <laughs> Thanks for the call out, Heiko. And yeah, guys, if you are totally new here, we do this every morning at 9.15. Every morning the market's open. We start um, for the, with the watch list review and then we trade the market open uh, till about 10.45. Today we're going over a little bit because I have not used all of my trades. <clears throat> bit of a slow morning for me. Um, and then afternoon, we come out with a recap video talking about the trading day. Um, so that'll be coming out in a few hours. So if you're interested, definitely consider subscribing. I'd love to see you again. And leave any questions and comments below. Um, I answer all of them myself. Sometimes I take, you know, it might take 24 hours if it's a big question or something like that, but I definitely answer all of them. I think I just found a few that I missed from last week, but typically I get through them all pretty quickly. EFOI, what an interesting little name. What's up, Joel? Here we go, SIF pulling back. Lord have mercy on this stock. I'm still waiting for some sort of catalyst to come out. I really feel like there's something horrible just waiting to be uncovered on this stock. Big pullback there. This is actually almost where we had our limit order uh, in the morning, you guys probably remember that. CYCC with Alan Winter. I think I know who you are. Yeah, CYCC doesn't look too bad. Um, big big sell-off, was a potential lead gapper today. Found some big support at four. <clears throat> I don't think there's much more downside. If anything, there's probably a good little bounce potential to at least 4.4, maybe even VWAP. Although with that super aggressive sell-off, I don't really see it going back to VWAP. Uh, but I think there's definitely a good chance for a 
you know, four or five percent profit on that, pretty clean at least. Yeah, SIF, this open range breakout was really, really nice. We had that one minute pullback potential entry. I'm surprised it didn't get halted here, but this would have been, that would have been the move right away, right away. Good to hear you two be two millions. You two be two millions. Any thoughts on BBI? I'll check it out in a second here. Uh, I might wrap up the trading day. I got one trade left, had one red, one green trade today. Just a bit of a scratch again. We didn't get the fall through I was waiting for. The first seven minutes on SIF would have been the ticket. After that, there was just, you know, maybe some lucky dip buys. And there was this one trade here that could have, should have, would have been really nice, but I I got shaken out of it a little bit too soon. So that was a little ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah, everything's trending super, super down, huh? AP Pro, yes, yeah, super true, huh? It's definitely a bit more of a short seller kind of day. Post upbeat Q1 results. That 1023 news did not do too much, huh? EFOI didn't really follow through either. I don't really see anything to trade. The only reason I would be sticking around right now is to try to squeeze in my one additional trade I could do today. I don't really see another reason to to stick around. Um, I think you know if I stayed here long enough, I probably would find some sort of setup, but then I'm also risking some serious, serious over trading um, and just maybe getting you know having some emotional entries or something like that. Feel the company. Look at this reje resistance on GNUS. Look at EFOI. Good thing we didn't get that. <clears throat> Live the second life. Entered SIF at 511. I mean, I mean, it's it's so tough to say. You know, I've been waiting for this one to break above VWAP, ideally break above five and start trending to the upside there. I didn't know if we would have broke 5.5. That was kind of my, you know, thesis. That's what I was waiting for. At least a retest of 5.5. Uh, the thing about SIF that we also have to remember, it's already, it's up 95% on the day. Um, had a pretty nice first leg, consolidated, and then had a second leg. Um, 
these are all things we typically look for. So everything looks quite healthy on it. It's just, you know, how much is it going to pull back before it tries to retest the highs? Maybe today is the last day as well that it has um, has a move. I don't know. It's, it's tough to say. For day trading, I don't see a good setup on it right now. For a swing trade, no idea. Um, yeah. I think for now, $4 is going to be a pretty critical area. I think by the time we do the recap video and definitely by tomorrow, it's going to be interesting to check out this former gapper to see if it held its highs. So far, we have been seeing stocks holding highs a little bit. But check out our former gappers. They almost always pull back. Um, very rarely do you get a really nice fall through. But when you do get a fall through, it's usually quite nice as well. In US. And right now, SIF is definitely trending to the downside. We just broke that critical 4.5 that we hold, held for quite some time. Even 4.4 was quite a key area. I think if I was long SIF, I'd be cutting my losses. But again, you know, it could shoot up all of a sudden. So it's, it's a tough one. I mean, you see how fast I get out of these trades. I, I have... I have the patience of, I don't know, a squirrel that's on the side of a tree, you know, either I'm going to go up or I'm not, you know, like either we break out or I get out, which tends to reduce a lot of my risk. And that's how, even though I've been having a few red days, I've been staying afloat very easily. You know, I could go on like this forever and eventually the markets are going to be hot again. Eventually I'm going to go through a green streak and then I'm going to, you know, be back to growing the account just sometimes. You got to trade the market you're in, not the market you want. And yeah, today is just un fun slow. Man, FWP. Let's quickly check out this little apple. Huge sell off on this one. I think it just came out with some news as well on the 08. A lot of times these things sell off when they come out with news, even if it's good news. This isn't, this is more macro news. It's actually not that bad of news. I'm surprised it sold off so aggressively. Nice little 9% bounce. Yeah, where was that? Was that at some botanical garden or something like that? I think that's where it was. That was a, the suicidal squirrel. It ran up the tree halfway to the top or almost at the top where the leaves started. The nut falls out of the squirrel's mouth and you can just see it like, no. And it turns around, it just jumps after the nut. That thing belongs in a Marvel movie or something like that. It was ridiculous. That was some dedication. Oh my lord. Today is just one of those days where you're like, what is going on? You gotta remember, I'm standing right now, so it makes it even worse. Or better, actually. <laughs> I think if I was sitting right now, I probably would have had a heart attack already. I think I'm going to probably have to wrap up my trading day because I'm already going past a lot of max stops and my trading day. I got, 
I got a list full of other things that need to be done. And I think the best, best part of why I like day trading small caps in the morning is because it only takes about an hour or days like today, two hours, and I'm done with work for the day. I'm done with you know trading. It's amazing. Um, or you can have you know you can FOMO out and just you know stare at the markets all day on a slow day, um, which I don't really find a great idea. I might make some money. I might also lose some money, but better to just kind of wrap up in my eyes. Um, I might still make a trade if I you know if I'm doing whatever and I see a perfect setup, I will still enter a trade. So I might still make one more trade. It won't be on the stream but you'll see it in the recap video. Now, if I make it after the recap video, you guys will see it obviously tomorrow in the stream. And you also see it on Trade Journal. But so far, I just don't see any reason to really stick around at the moment. I think FWP buying that dip would have been quite nice, but that kind of came out of nowhere and I missed, missed it, unfortunately. Right at 8.5. Beautiful dip. SIF, who knows? This thing could pull back to four. Might break four. Selling volume might slow down. Might go back to 3.7 where we had the morning breakout. I just think whatever happens, I think it's going to be very slow. And it's just going to kind of do its thing for a while here. Satoshi, you guys are important. You guys, you guys are the most important thing, but <laughs> no, we're all here to learn from each other. Obviously that's why I stick around uh, longer, try to squeeze out a trade on the, on the stream. But I think it's also something valuable to understand when to walk away. And I think I think understanding when to walk away is quite powerful. EFOI could be a little cup and handle move here, but again, just you know, shooting shooting darts or what's shooting blanks? Shoot, shooting into the dark, is that the saying? That's what I feel like I'm doing right now. Yeah, sounds good, Jeffrey. Send them over. I also have my email in the video description below. Um, or or DM me on Instagram or or Twitter. Can you say that for Twitter? DM me, direct message me? Of course. I think so, right? CYCC could be continuing its little trend to the upside. It's also such a slow mover. There's almost no volume on it. Um, wow, wow, wow. This has probably been the slowest week. I almost want to say of the year. I'm not sure. I would have to really second get, like second check myself, but it's somehow Monday, Tuesday, and today, it's been a little bit dead in the small cap world. I'm not sure if we've had that this year. It's been quite an eventful year. Ah, oh, nice, perfect, Jeffrey. ALT, are you telling me to look at ALT? I'm a little confused. I'll look at it right now. Let me pull it up. Blue, ALT, or is this just like alt? Good call. Good, 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 good call. Why did I not see it? 13%. Ah, percentage mover on this one's really, really weak. We actually traded this not too long ago. Having a nice little breakout here. $4 is uh, some key zones. Files AK. The rate of change on ALT is just very, very slow. But this is looking pretty hot, I gotta say.
It's only up 12% on the day. SIF is pulling back. 15 million shares outstanding on ALT. That's actually not too bad of an amount. We had a pretty solid breakout there on this one. Volumes coming in on it as well. I don't like the rate of change on it. I think that's the that's the one thing I'm not super stoked about. Four candles, four minutes, I mean, 4% in four minutes. That's really, really slow. But it's trending to the upside. Nice, Satoshi. I was just thinking about that one today. I was like, where is that email from Satoshi? Nice, now I have a way to contact you. I am so past my trading time. All right, I'm gonna keep an eye on SIF. I don't know if I'm gonna keep watching ALT. I don't really like how slow it is, but who knows? AFOI back at 64%. You know, this one out of all of them almost interests me the most, just because I do think if we break 0.7, this thing has absolute potential. Having a bit of a cup and handle here, this is a pretty clear five minute breakout, one minute pullback spot, so. I'm gonna take a quick break and then maybe I'll do a little bit more trading, maybe not. I'll definitely be starting the recap video before 12. So <clears throat> I'll wrap it up here, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you guys learned something today. I know it was a little bit slower of a day, but that's outside of my control. Um, at least we learned how to deal with slow days a little bit. And again, getting aggressive for me, at least in that first 15 minutes would have been the way to go. Um, I was just a little bit extra conservative after you know we've been having kind of slow momentum in the markets. I gotta say EFOI, if you guys see me to trade this one, don't be surprised. Yep, 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 that's a good point. All right guys. I will see you then next time. Goodbye. <laughs> B-Y-E. You got me confused on that one. Yeah, once you link your accounts on TD Ameritrade, you will see them here and you can switch between your accounts. It goes very quick. Write TD support if you need help because they have some really awesome support. All right, guys, till next time, stay safe, make some awesome trades, don't overtrade, don't emotional trade. If anything, dip ISIF, just kidding, because <laughs> that's what I might do. We'll see what happens. See you guys first thing tomorrow morning. Ciao, ciao.